First off, it's probably a good idea to use DuckDuckGo. They don't record your searches like Google does. And also on their homepage, they have a lot of helpful tips for how to avoid being tracked on the internet and the various ways that companies track you and some things that you can do to protect yourself from that tracking. But let's talk about encrypted emails. So the first thing that you'll need is several programs or two programs, Thunderbird, and we'll just search for it. And you've probably been through this process a million times. You click on the link, you press the download button, and you download the program. The other thing that we'll need is GNU Privacy Guard, or GPG. You can just search for GPG. And when you get to the page, you'll see a link to GPG for Windows, if you're using Windows. If you're using Mac, there's other options. I'm going to just install the vanilla because it's all we'll really need for what we're going to be doing here. So once the programs have downloaded, you go through the normal process of installing. You know, you click the buttons and then you just work your way through the menu items and they're pretty straightforward. The default settings are, are just fine. And uh, when you get to the end, on GPG at least, you can read the README or you can skip it. I skipped it. Next, I'm installing Thunderbird here. And just, just like you would expect, it installs and I'm just accepting all of the defaults along the way. When you first run Thunderbird, it's going to ask you some questions. I'm going to set it as the default. You don't have to. I'm going to skip getting an address from one of these places because I have my own address. And then, you know, I'll just enter the information for that address here. And it's a demo address. Please don't send emails to this address because no one will ever read them. Now I'm going to choose POP instead of IMAP because IMAP stores the messages on the server and once you've learned about the third party doctrine you will not want that even though IMAP is more convenient. Uh, I've not bought for my own email a um, certificate so I get the scare warning. Anyway now I've got it set up or at least mostly set up the one thing that's going to happen when you try to send your first email if you're using your own web server or your own email server is that the SMTP server also has a certificate and you're going to get the scare message and the email will fail. So I just closed everything out here and then confirm the security exception and then start again. Now I'm going to send a test email uh, and just to make sure that I have email working because that's the first step in being able to encrypt your emails I have a good email account and so I send an email to myself and then I hit get mail and what do you know there's two here one email is from a previous attempt at setting this up which made me realize that the default settings in Thunderbird do not automatically delete the emails off the server and I'm going to mention it again, third party doctrine, you want to get this stuff off the third parties as soon as you can. So I'm just going to go into the server settings and you'll see somewhere in there, eventually I'll find it here, that I don't want to leave the messages on the server. I just want them to be deleted right away. Okay, so now I've got email working. Let's set up GPG. One thing I noticed <clears throat> when I installed this is it has a couple extensions and there's like no information about what this is. I could Google it but whatever I was too lazy to do that so I just decided not to activate these things. I don't know what they do maybe they're good maybe they're bad who knows. What we want to do is we want to get a plugin called Enigmail E-N-I-G-M-A-L and we install that it downloads it and then once it's downloaded we will have to restart uh, Thunderbird and you can see that green line at the top has a little restart button you click that 
and it restarts. So it drops us back here at our add-on page and we close that and we are now ready to set up GPG. So you look at the menu, open GPG. Now there's a setup wizard but I wouldn't recommend using it because it limits you to a 2 kilobit key and you can make a 4 kilobit key manually and it's not that much more difficult. Just click generate new key pair. You'll want to enter a passphrase. I mean, you can do this without a passphrase, but it's not recommended because if someone steals your key, then they can just use it. We'll set it to 4096 RSA, and then we'll click the Generate Key button. As soon as I get the mouse off the cancel, there we go. And click. Now this is going to take a little while. Um, my computer is not super fast. It's an old MacBook Pro, but it took a while to it took a while to generate that, you know, almost 40 seconds. You'll also want to generate a revocation certificate and um, you'll save it, but you're going to want to put it somewhere safe, but just save it somewhere for now. Uh, it'll ask you for the password. You enter your password and then you click OK. Uh, and I click on the left and right. There's this message here about transferring this revocation certificate to somewhere safe because uh, see there quick quick you want to read that because if someone steals it they could revoke your public key private key pair anyway here's your public key private key pair now the one thing I've noticed is that it, it just helps once every time you've imported a key maybe even generated a key to restart Firefox so we restarted it and we will go back into the menu and go to open open PGP there go to key management and um, then we'll just right click on the key that we've created and I'll send that public key by email you can also upload it to a public key server where it'll get propagated around the world um, so anyway this address the public at restore the fourth bellingham.org is good if you ever want to contact me um, I'm going to send my public key to that address and then off the screen here I receive that email and send the other public key send my public my public key from the public email address here and then what I would do is import this into GPG or into Enig mail and so I saved it um, open up uh, the key management, go to File, Import, and there's the key I just downloaded, and now it's imported. Every time you, you import a key, you're going to have to restart the program. And so we restart. Now we are about ready to do um, an encrypted message but I want to change some things on the account you're going to get a bunch of error messages about HTML formatted messages so if you go to accounts composing and addressing and uncheck untick the uh, HTML mail then uh, your life will be happier so now I'm going to type out a super secret message that I'm going to encrypt to my other address and uh, so yeah I like hazelnut lattes anyway I'll send that and sign it it'll ask me for the password now at the end I'll show you a place where you can change the uh, how long it remembers your password um, and you can even set it so you never have to type your password again I don't know how advisable that is so anyway I sent the message and now here I just received a reply back because I snipped out all of the you know the delay it took for me to type out that message um, so it looks pretty instantaneous here but see there's an encrypted message back unfortunately they're out of hazelnut and uh, that really makes it so I, I, I just can't can't go on and so I'll send that email and it'll automatically encrypt it for me.
Now, if you were to look at what this email looked like to some person in the middle, if they were to intercept it, this is what they would see. Notice that the subject line is plain text. Who I sent it to is plain text. It's probably not a good idea to make the subject line all that related to the contents of the email because that metadata is plain text and available for everyone to see. But there it is. We have exchanged encrypted emails. Now, if you want to change the frequency with which you have to change your password, you would um, go to Open PGP Preferences, and uh, uh, in basic you can see there's a passphrase settings you can set the idle time or you can even check the box where it never asks for the password <laughs>